today we start a new topic what is called low level vision. And uh, under this the things of interest are some basic things like you know filtering uh, which I think uh, you are all roughly familiar with you know what you have done in your 1D and all. But I still thought so there are certain things that uh, that are not exactly what you would have found in 1D. So, I thought I will talk about them just uh, differences rest and all I think you can figure it out yourself. Then, uh, then we want to actually head towards extracting features from an image right. So, these features are so these features are something that kind of stand out for example, a, you know, a corner right it is actually a very striking feature which is easy to track across frames and so on right. So, so you want to kind of look at so features are interesting points of course, they can also be adjust you know they can also be more than a point, but uh, normally this would be some kind of a very very local thing okay which uh, we will see you know where we can apply it and you know how it is kind of useful right. But uh, prior to that uh, let us first start with uh, like you know filtering okay. start with image filtering or what is called a 2D filtering. Uh, we have already seen in terms of uh, you know so filtering as an operation even in CNNs right we saw that already right we saw that we could actually we could have filters you know that would uh, work on your feature maps in order to see produce you know <coughs> output feature maps and so on. And there, there those filters were not handcrafted right in the sense that given a task you had a network I mean whose job was to figure out you know what might be the right kind of filter and so on and uh, we never bothered about what those filters actually in the sense that we never went into their weights to see what they are doing we just understood that you know the initial filters would probably pick up edges and so on the orientation and then at a mid level something will happen which is a combination and then that uh, whatever the, the mid level and then the and then the you know final layers something else will happen which is a little more complex in order to solve a task. So, but now right, but now we want to come back you know take two steps backward and sort of look at you know how this filtering was actually and also if you have to do it in a kind of a traditional way right then there are it is very neat and you know one wants to understand right how that is and uh, and like I said right you know it is always good to know both on the one hand you know what uh, one can do the with a deep network and another thing that we should always realize is that it is not like right deep networks can solve our problems right let us understand that you know despite Okay, by the way right just one more thing uh, what we have left out okay out of deep networks I mean that I think you are likely to encounter is what is called an auto encoder okay which I think you know which uh, you can easily follow now based upon the background that you have and there is another thing what is called uh, a GAN a generative adversarial network okay. So, these are two things that we have left out because, because we could not cover them, but uh, you know you are in a position now to be able to read any paper you know in deep network and be able to understand it okay. It might just require a little bit of a little bit more work if it is something that has not been taught in the class, but, but everything you can follow now okay. So, I think you do not have to there should be no mental block right in being able to read a paper on deep network because right now any paper that you touch will will typically have something that is using you know a deep network right. So, I think you should have that kind of a comfort level now. So, now let us kind of get some comfort level at uh, at a more kind of you know for uh, what you call you know uh, in the in the kind of say traditional approach. And uh, here right we are going to look at uh, look at basic filtering operations and you know in 2D and then we will see right how these filtering operations are actually taken forward in order to the other things that I mentioned like you know you might want to extract features you know descriptors and all that. So, how the how all of that happens and and then and then the kind of a pipeline is such that you know using those features what else can you do I mean that is when geometry kicks in. So, we have like low level vision right I mean what we can do there and then how it can kind of it, it can feed into a geometry okay which is which is the one that we will cover next. So, geometry I think we have single and then you know stereo as well as multi view right, but then before going there let us just uh, let us just right do these do these simple things. Now, just to motivate this right I will just uh, I'll just show you a few slides just as just to motivate but then the idea is something like this right. So, so your filtering right you could you could do it for various reasons and all of these are very simple operations by the way okay not uh, the complicated ones that we have already seen and that is why that is why you are I mean this should uh, go in faster 
so you see that right there is an image in the left it, I mean so here okay what you have is an image and then and then it you want to okay I think this PDF I cannot edit so what you can do is you know you can actually you can sharpen it if you wish and all these are based upon some kind of a 2D filter right that you want to use and what can 2D filter will go where that is something that we have to handcraft now because we are not asking a deep network to do to can do it anymore right now we have to figure out what will be the right kind of filter or for example right you might be interested in uh, in actually edges right something like a Lena I mean this is a very famous image right a very famous lady so so if you if you if you apply some kind of an you know edge finder on that image right then you get all the portions where there is a gradient where there is a high gradient right and uh, things that are relatively homogeneous like her shoulder and all right you won't see much coming out of there so wherever there is image activity right I mean this uh, this kind of a filter should sort of flag it or you might even do a template matching right uh, so this is in those days right it used to be called as a template matching and the effect was all was always in terms of being able to you know locate a particular template inside an image this is what we do right when you say what is that I spy and stuff like that right so where something is embedded somewhere and then you want to kind of pick it up and in those days right people used to talk about uh, how to handle scale how to handle orientation but these are all taken up as, as you know individual problems by themselves whereas now I think we know for example right that there are other ways of doing it also but a traditional is still very very well grounded so it is important to know okay what goes in there so so right this is at a very low level you can actually you know sort of escalate it a little bit more okay and then and then you know you can kind of talk about things like denoising uh, <coughs> which is like you know mitigating noise I mean we never say remove noise we always say mitigate or you know uh, remove uh, reduce the effects of noise so you see that in the, in the left right uh, there is this uh, salt pepper noise right which basically means that you've got you know extreme values it's not like a gaussian noise you can also have additive you know white gaussian noise but the example given here is one of uh, salt and pepper so it's like salt and pepper if you had and if you were to sprinkle it right on the image what you would get is a salt pepper noise and it's arbitrary <coughs> in the sense that you know it is kind of signal independent <coughs> it can occur anywhere and you know it can <coughs> Uh, and uh, and there are ways to deal with it and uh, typically in linear filters do not do well on such kinds of noise and then one has what are called median filters and so on very simple ones what are called order statistics filters and then you know they, they, they do a good job they are very simple may not be linear but they are very simple. So when you say they are not linear that means there is uh, there is an implication that uh, maybe a fast implementation is probably not possible and so on because anything that has a Fourier counterpart we know that you know FFTs are available but the moment you say non-linear right then it sort of hits a hits a kind of a little bit of a roadblock but that is okay and we need not worry about that so much in terms of computation but I will also hint upon computation somewhere okay. Then the next picture that you see is one of a super resolution so here it is like saying that you know how do you kind of if you had a low quality camera and you captured a picture like the one that you see there uh, like that man right and uh, you wanted to actually you want to enhance the quality of that picture and uh, does your phone have this kind of thing these days I think it has more like a zoom tool right I mean so you can zoom but that is all actually interpolation right there is no kind of new information that comes in you have to build upon what you already have and optical zoom is not that okay that is actually different I mean there you actually get the details but uh, all this uh, soft zoom as they call they are all like you know interpolation or uh, no, different different interpolation methods but this is not like that okay this is actually picking up the details right, uh, from given a low quality image and there is a lot of work in this area but again right if I talk about filtering right you might wonder for example you know suppose I say that uh, you know you had to instead of this if you had a blurred picture and suppose you wanted to de blur it right now blurring itself is actually a filtering operation it is a smoothing operation so you can think of applying some filter on an image and then right, arriving at something that looks like a low quality blurred image and uh, then when you talk about you know removing the blur okay you can even even there you can actually talk about what is called you know inverse filtering so that is also a convolution operation but uh, it could be unstable sometimes sometimes it is not even you may not even be able to do it depends upon what happens in the to the <coughs> to the Fourier domain right I mean the, in the Fourier domain what happens to this uh, function that is acting on that image so right if it has zeros in the Fourier domain then you cannot actually invert it right so you, so you run into some trouble but then people have ways something called what is called pseudo inverse filtering and so on which is an approximation and people get away but again right <coughs> these have had problems that is why deep networks came in and then you know but these are all right one of the things that you should notice is that there is no assumptions being made anywhere right you are given just one that one example and then you are trying to do what you can with that 
there is nothing like tons of data coming in and falling at your feet right nothing like that I mean you have what you have just that one image and you have to you have to worry about what you can do with it. Then something else which is kind of in painting right so here also you can think about those places where there are scribbles now this is just some artificial kind of thing right and uh, and then right, you might want to say how do I fill in those regions now nowadays right people do what is called out painting which is like you know I give you an image and then you have to tell what could be lying outside the image right? you know, for a lot of years people are doing what is inside and now they say what what probably how does it extend outside right what lot could be the logical extension of what lies outside. <coughs> So, again right here also you can think of a filter that kind of locally acts right around in a kind of neighborhood and sort of tries to make sense about what might have been there right. One other thing that we should also remember is that you know it is not always true that you know that you have to you have to synthesize these uh, these kind of filters okay they uh, can also occur naturally okay it is not like every time we have to sit down and construct a filter to do this. For example, your camera itself right when you have a blurring it is an optical blur when it is out of focus right you are not creating any you are not applying something on the image it comes out automatically right. So, that is like a natural blur it is a kernel again it is some, some sort of a kernel that is acting but that kernel is coming because of the optics and it is not like you are you are applying something on an image. And similarly right when you find motion blur something is moving right you get a smearing effect those are all things that just happen naturally. So, again right one has to one has to be clear that it is not always true that kernel or these filters and all it does not mean they have to be made by us okay. It can also be that they come they occur naturally in the images that you see okay all right and uh, okay. So, with that right so, so, the, so let me just say right I mean so you might just want to whatever right blur sometimes and uh, can you can you think of an application of blurring I mean why would somebody want to blur something blur sharpen sharpen I can understand why you do not want to blur reduce data says anything else ah, exactly sensitive information. So, you want to mask somebody's face do not they do not they do it all the time in the paper and all right they do something and then they find they ask can you find out who is this chap is right and they, they blur it so badly right and uh, and then super resolution in painting right all these all these are exact but of course you know the higher you go then the small filters and all do not work but but till this point to some extent de blurring right you can you can think about some kind of filtering operation that can that can take you there super resolution is more complicated but anyway okay I mean you can still talk about that is again you know uh, a down sampling you know follow I mean that is like uh, okay an averaging followed by kind of say down sampling. Uh, so, so the way so the way right we look at this filtering operation is simply a 2D this one a convolution a convolution we have already seen right. So, so we can save ourselves the time of repeating what we said but what, what we said was this right. So, gmn okay this is your 2D image I will just write a discrete case. So, you may have a, so you may have something like a, an image which is like m prime comma n prime and then and then you know you can have h of m minus m prime n minus n prime or you can equivalently write okay, this is summed over of course m prime n prime or you can equal equivalently have h of m prime this is all and most of these things right will be exactly the same as uh, uh, same as what you what you see in 1D right. So, again m prime n prime uh, normally right this is uh, more uh, uh, easy to follow because uh, you know h is typically of a very so uh, this is your image and what you want to do to it depends upon what you choose as your h. Right. So, for example, it, it could be an averager okay, in which case in which case you will end up smoothing the image I mean it could be a difference operator or a div I mean it could lead to a differencing kind of an effect in which case you may get edges and so on okay, from f and uh, typically these have a very very small support okay, your image could be as big as you care I mean you know 1024 by 1024 or something, but h and all h will typically be like 3 cross 3, 5 cross 5, 7 cross 7 does not typically exceed that. Okay. So, therefore, the boundary effects and all we do not really worry so, worry so much about that is there in those slides I mean uh, so somewhere we have mentioned as to what you should do if you are at the boundary what kind of approximations you can make and so on. But uh, yeah we will not worry too much about you know what happens when that kernel goes to the boundary because the rest of the action is happening in, in so many places which is still large enough that we do not want to right, I mean harp on what is happening at the boundary. Right.